Wish We Could Turn Back Time by Girl and Pink 44. Chapter 5 Laying the Foundation. A couple of hours later, Peter was content to work on a Lego set that Happy had picked up. The lunch fair had decorated the table earlier was now gone in favour of papers, maps, and crude drawings. Rhody stood at one end, Happy at the other, and everyone else had found a place to settle. Tomorrow is the focal point. Tony looked at the group. There's the meeting with the military, the meeting with the board, and the press conference. Younger and me forgot to do two of the three there. I think that should start taking care of Obadiah easier. It will also help me improve my public image out of the gate, which might come in handy down the road. What do you mean by that? Last time, Tony rather abruptly shut down the weapons division of Stark Industries without a plan in place or notifying anyone. It caused a lot of problems that we spent far too much valuable time cleaning up. Pepper looked at the documents Jarvis had pulled from the SI servers. Papa, I know I need to remain in the position for a few months to ease everything over after Stone, but I desperately need your input. It's been ages since I was an acting AO, for more than a few weeks here and there. She nodded. Honeybear, if we can work on some prototypes for defensive equipment, and possibly pitch some enhanced communication devices, that might help us avoid the frosty reception with the military down the road. You could not have done it worse than you did last time, Dones. The man looked up at him, his grin easing any of the bites the statement had. I can also work on my end with people I know to make sure there's less hostility this time around. The fact that you're going to explain your reasoning and you're not cutting all ties will help. Tony nodded, not for the first time relieved he had back up for this. Happy, we've got a head start on this because of last time, but I need you to start working on cleaning the house. Tomorrow we start making steps towards being the stock industries of the years that never were. I want us moving faster, smarter, and more innovative than we did before. Tony paused, the matter that had been bugging him incessantly finally winning out. I've been wondering if I was too hasty in the past but I can't shake the idea that it's the right thing to do. What's that? Papa asked. Should I halt weapons production? There are regulations, loopholes that Obi has found, but it shouldn't be that easy to smuggle weapons like he does. But what if I could make something that could help us win against Thanos? Tony robbed the spot where the gauntlet had sat on his hand not so long ago, yet in some ways terribly far away. He turned to the group walking over to the windows and staring out at the ocean, trying to slow his breathing. What if we lose a gun, and it's on me because I shut down a potentially valuable resource? The group looked at him like he'd grown a second head, but it was Rody who that finally stood up. Tones, I'll admit, when you did it last time, I was angry for a long time at your impulsive decision, but I came to realise that it was the right one. But at the end of the day, we have to face facts. Even with our advanced knowledge, the world might not catch up in time to face what Thanos brings. He's right, Happy spoke up. I think your plan to bring together more in advanced people and create a new, better Avengers initiative is the right way to go. Tony. Pepper took his hand, a voice gentle yet firm in a way he was far too familiar with. Don't second guess yourself about this. There are a lot of ways to do good here. I know that this decision was one you never regretted. Please, don't start now. There were not enough hours in the day for Tony to properly express how much he loved Pepper. How much he didn't deserve her. How thankful he was that she loved him back. How she knew just how to talk him out of a potential spiral. To be honest, it was stopping your weapons division that started to turn the tides with the public. May spoke up. It was the first obvious sign that you had changed, and the way you diverted those resources to other projects, that that made such a difference. Don't take that away from the world. Tony looked at the group, a peace settling over him as the doubts seemed to fade. He really didn't want to make weapons again, and have others verify that he didn't have to go down that path made him feel good. He was tired of that being his legacy, and he certainly didn't want it to be Peter's, Harley's and Morgan's. What can we do, Tony? Ben asked. He seemed unsure, as if lost and unsure of his role in this found family. 
Rose Pooter. It might not seem like much, but he represents the future. My legacy, the Avengers. He was already poised to be better than any of us. And now, with extra time, I can't wait to see what he does. Your family, May. The stones brought you all back for a reason. If nothing else, it was to give me support so I could do what needs to be done. Tony smiled at the couple. And me? Peter abandoned the Legos in favour of latching onto Tony's right leg. You just be you. The world needs more people like Peter Parker. And how you're going to give me a fewer grey hairs while you're at it. Peter laughed. It was higher pitched than Tony was used to. But he still found that it was somewhat similar and oddly soothing. And when I'm older? We'll talk. May and I both know we can't stop you. But if you still decide you want to be Spider-Man and him to make an appearance, we'll be installing all of the safety protocols in advance. But that's for years down the road. He picked up Peter. For now, you get to be a kid again. And once I move to New York, we'll do our lab days again. Oh, then. He rested his head on Tony's shoulder. Happy? We may fly out to New York with them for a week. I want to look over the apartment and make sure it's secure. I'm not confident I can avoid people from finding out about Peter eventually. And when it happens, I want him safe. Of course, boss. May, we're going to have another discussion about you working at the tower when it exists. The answer won't change, Tony. I love my job. You can love this job too. Plus, you'll be at the tower. Shoot, Ben, I can get you a job too if you'd like. Let's table that discussion for later, Tony. May winced. Out of the blue, Rhodey swore and Tony turned. What's going on, Honeybear? The vice president. His ties to AIM. The whole Mandarin thing could be avoided. How? Tony liked the idea of avoiding that whole fiasco. But at the same time, it did give him back adored into meeting Harley. If he didn't come up with a better way by then. It's not like we can go to Ellis and tell him his VP is corrupt and we know because we're from the future. We need proof. And I'm not sure... Where to start looking for that? Servers? Hacker's phone? Throw it from the poisonous tree, Happy interjected. We have to find a way of obtaining the information legally, or it'll be thrown out of the court. Then we make an enemy of the White House, and that will bite us in the ass when it comes time for the accords. I'd really prefer that to not blow up in our faces any more than it already has. Pepper looked up from where she was reading SI files. Also, as your CEO... I'd like to point out that it would also knock us in the stocks and potentially undo a lot of the goodwill you're trying to get here by starting out on the right foot. Tony nodded, agreeing with her. We need the goodwill for when the fallout happens with S.H.I.E.L.D. What we need to do is distance ourselves from the Avengers Initiative and S.H.I.E.L.D. from the get-go. Happy crossed his arms. At the end of the day, the shortfalls of that project were part of what led to Thanos winning. Earth's mightiest heroes barely pulled it together to save the day. Tony winced, but conceded that Happy had a point. Perhaps we could find a way to partner the Iron Man and War Machine projects with the United Nations and the US military. Rhodey held up some documents. If Tony remembered correctly, they were a collection of the highlights from the Accords. We could get in on the ground level of any future Accords and make sure that it works to protect both the enhanced and civilians alike. Basically, we'd be based out of the US, but countries could request our assistance if they needed them. Tony sat down and leaned in his seat. It could work, and we'd avoid situations like Lagos if we did. What happened in Lagos? Ben asked. Tony hesitated. Regardless of it being almost a decade ago, that period still stung more than he cared to admit. Rogers took some of our newer recruits on a mission to track down an arms dealer in Lagos. One of the newer recruits lost control of her powers and people ended up dead. Things spiralled from there and honestly, the only good thing that came out of that entire mess was meeting Peter. The group turned and saw the boy happily playing with the Legos again. When things calmed down, Tony wanted to see how much of Peter was six and how much was still the teenager. He had his powers, memories and knowledge, 
but at times he did very much act like the kid he was again. Neuroscience wasn't his specialty, but he might spend some time reading some articles about the processes the human brain goes through when someone hits puberty to get a feel for what might happen in Peter's head. One thing Tony had to admit was that he was itching to go back into his lab and tinker. He had missed that lab and to get a chance to be back in it was something he was excited to take full advantage of. Jarvis, keep an eye on SI shares. If any come up for sale, grab them. I want a firmer majority if possible. We're going to clean house starting at the top. Also, go ahead and look into selling any shares in Apple and Microsoft I might have. That earned him some looks. From most of the room, it was confusion, but Peter looked excited. He grinned. We're going to present some ideas tomorrow about the future of Stark Industries. Carrot and Stuck. I think it's time we broke into the tech field a few years earlier than last time. We're going to make phones? Peter asked. And tablets and computers. It's time we get your coding up to snuff. Rody, we need to look into non-offensive gear for the military. I wouldn't mind keeping some of those contacts. Perhaps if we go into the meeting prepared tomorrow, it might go better. He turned to Ben and May. Tomorrow is a full day. I can hire someone to drive you around or have your car or you are welcome to just hang around here. Peter opened his mouth, but Tony put a hand up. Until I take care of Stone, you're not stepping a foot in an SI building. Am I clear? Peter nodded. Tony smiled. After that's taken care of, I'm open to a bring my kid to work day. Tony had always been an insomniac. For as long as he remembered, he preferred to work on things in the odd hours of the morning instead of sleeping. Then it wasn't like he made up for it by sleeping in. No, Tony Stark didn't sleep. The fact itself was an open secret that people commented on, but after Afghanistan, it had gotten worse with the addition of PTSD and nightmares. And he'd never gotten help. Sure, there was an ill attempt to talk to Bruce, which he should have known was an awful idea. That was something he might need to fix this time, except he didn't know if he could find a therapist he could talk to. Certainly not one he could tell the whole truth to. Perhaps he could talk about the experiences as they came up in the timeline and mix the old and the new. At that moment, it was two in the morning and he had been up in five hours to get ready for a meeting with the higher ups in the military. And if he was honest, he had no desire to sleep and face the nightmares that he knew would come. Last night, he had crashed out of exhaustion both from the day and the day that never was. But tonight, he didn't have that bone-weary exhaustion to deal with. He sat in his lab, not really doing anything productive. He messed with the plans for an updated arc reactor a bit, had made a note to get the model out of his office as soon as he could without Obi being suspicious. Dad? He turned to see Peter at the door. Sleep seemed to cling to his face, and he seemed nervous. It looked different more innocent at this age, when he hadn't quite lost all of his baby fat, and the years hadn't been quite as harsh on him yet. When Peter saw that he had gotten Tony's attention, he smiled. A small one. Let him in, Joe. The door clicked open and Peter came in, wide-eyed even though he had been in the room a couple of hours ago. Dummy came over. Excited beeps sounded as he greeted his little brother. Peter happily petted him. What are you doing, Abru? couldn't sleep. He held up his arms like he wanted to be picked up and Tony obliged. Peter snuggled into his chest like he had at nap time and hummed happily. Is it weird? What? Tony started playing with his curls. I'm a kid. You're used to big me. I love any version of you, Spiderling. But I can't help. I'm too little. Tony looked down at the kid in his lap. You help by being you. I didn't create time travel and save half the universe for Spider-Man. I saved it for Peter Parker. You saved it because it was the right thing to do. Tony sighed. I said no, originally. Peter shifted and looked up. What? I told Cap and Nat no. 
I had done my best to grieve you and move on. I had Peppa and Morgan, and I kept your memory alive by telling her stories about the amazing Spider-Man. You know, she was you for Halloween. Twice. Peter blushed and Tony grinned. What changed? I saw a chance to get you back. A chance to tell you how I feel. A chance to hug you, teach you. A chance to give the world back something so precious it didn't realise it lost. Peter snuggled back into his chest, seeming to know where to go to not aggravate his wound. Does it hurt? It does. Will you get rid of it again? Probably, but not for a little bit. Now it's back to bed for spider wings. You need to sleep too, Peter pouted. Tony scooped him up, resting him on his hip. I'm not sure that's a good thing. Maybe... Tony exited the lab as Jarvis dimmed the lights and took the elevator. He was still working on getting used to the reduced lung capacity that the reactor gave along with the heaviness in his chest. Maybe what? Maybe I could sleep with you. You chase away my nightmares and I can chase away yours. This kid, this precious kid, was far too good to be so trusting of someone like Tony. That sounds like a wonderful idea. The elevator let them off and Tony made his way down the hall to his bedroom. Already Peppa was sleeping and Tony sat Peter down on the bed. Give me a minute, Rue. Quickly changing into sweats, he climbed over and crawled into the bed. Middle or side? Side. That way you're in a pepper and me sandwich. That's one of the best ideas I've heard, Peter. Pepper rolled over, placing an arm around Tony. We'll protect him while he sleeps. I can do that. Peter climbed under the covers and snuggled close. Tony grinned. He ran his hand through Peter's curls. Something he would never grow tired of and something he was fairly certain would start annoying the kid again far too soon. It didn't take long for his breathing to even out and for the kid to fall asleep. Satisfied Peter was sleeping, Tony finally closed his eyes. Sure, they might not be able to completely keep the nightmares at bay, but his family had reminded him that they were there and that was enough to give him the courage to sleep. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that one. Oh, that was beautiful. Lovely chapter, that one. Them having all these debates about the best option to go with. Oh, I love that so much. Anyway, um, you guys know the drill. Like, comment and subscribe and hit that bell to get notified for whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day, night or whatever time zone you're in. Take care, my guys, gals and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Bye.